So the, <coughs> my presentation is the scientific and technological achievement of drilling vessel CQ in the plate subduction zone drilling. You see in front of the Mount Fuji, the beautiful picture of the CQ, which was introduced to the uh, uh, 2007 to the IODP Integrated Ocean Dream Program as a flagship. This is one of the largest facilities Japanese scientific ever made, spending some millions of dollars. And then at the time there was a cutting edge technology, drill flow, you can see the riser technology, which is a double, uh, <coughs> the uh, tubing system which rise the cuttings from the deep sea floor. And then we have a state of art uh, scientific laboratory. The mission of the CQ was space uh, subduction zone, drilling and deep uh, drilling to the mantle and the biosphere exploration and also the global uh, uh, environmental changes. So to me, we call the integrated ocean dream program. What does integration mean? There was the integration of the platforms, integration of the funds, integration of the international community, but to me is an integrated technology. What is integrated technology means? Core, load, seismic, observatory, and experiment integration. Core is a geological sampling. Uh, logging is a physical property measurement of borehole wall by the uh, magnetoelectric and acoustic uh, profiling. And seismic is a uh, one which you use uh, artificial uh, a seismic source to image the geological structure underneath the seafloor. And observatory is a used borehole observatory, borehole as an observatory and connect to the cable network. And the experiment is using borehole. You do some active experiment. For example, the case we done in the Okinawa Trough is using the borehole. We control the hydrothermal activity and mineral precipitation under known uh, uh, controlled environment. So to me, it is the integration of the key for the new science program at that time, about 20 years ago. Then, so I'd like to speak about the history of the integration. About 35 years ago, when I was a little young, and then <laughs> there is a Fred Moore and Tansen Maru. We have two ship seismic experiment with Greg Moore and Nishizawa-san together on board. And what two ship seismic experiment means? You use two ships, shooting ship and then receiver ship, and then there's a constant, a constant profile, constant distance profile, and split profiling. Is one ship goes this way, one ship the, the other way, and then you use the mid common midpoint as a velocity control point. With this kind of technology, at, at the time, these are available to us through the oil and gas exploration experience, but it's been used for the uh, scientific purpose. Uh, our ship was much uh, inexpensive the uh, oil and gas uh, 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 community, but I think we deploy uh, this system to, for the scientific purpose for the first time in the history of marine ge uh, geophysics. And of course, this was difficult because the positioning of two ship, it was crucial. There was no GPS available at that time. So we used the la land radio station. And it was actually illegal to use a land station personally for this, this kind of purpose. And then I was kind of uh, called by the Ministry of uh, uh, Communication, uh, well, you have done something wrong. But, uh, you know, re these reckless American came, they, they are so ignorant about the whole thing. So anyway, <laughs> we are, uh, anyway, we, I have 
escaped from the, the, the chase. But the result was phenomenal. Uh, this is a little bit old picture, but uh, this is a seismic profile, about five kilometer here. It's uh, uh, 1.5 kilometer in, in vertical distance. And then we do the hole in the Nankai offshore of the Muroto Peninsula, uh, 1300 meter penetration. And then I was a co chief scientist on this particular lake, but I behave more or less like a prophet. You know, like, well, next quarter you can see, you will find a, a, a fault stone. Next quarter you will find mudstone, all these things. You know, I was a ge geochemist, looked at me uh, as a so great. <laughs> so this is the late first time I gave the whole so-called whole round the core to the geochemist. Uh, and then because uh, the, the recovery was really fantastic. This is because the velocity structure of these formations were constrained by the two, two ship seismic experiment. So you can see over the bottom these layers. These are turbulent sand uh, mat alteration. And then you see this four layer be offset to this point, the 150 meter of the displacement of the reverse fault, beautifully illustrated. And then you can see here is a strong reflector uh, at the bottom of a thousand meter. And this here is a mudstone because there is much uh, reflections. But this reflection turned out to be a decoruma, is the one which is descending this way, and this is uh, uh, deforming under thrusting zone. This is a plate boundary. Underneath is the oceanic crust. So this is a beautiful uh, 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 example of logging. Proper logging provides you wealth of geological information, and if you do it through, you got the enriched, really fantastic uh, geological information. But on this particular leg in one, uh, 1990, I had a kind of ambition. Install first time in the uh, IOD, ODP uh, borehole observatory. The reason was that this Dekolma zone, which is a plate boundary, and why there is a plate boundary at that particular horizon, and what this particular zone is doing about the plate tectonics, or even the later seismogenesis. So we, our hypothesis was there was an overpressure zone, there was going to be a fluid flow through this particular zone. Therefore, we installed the uh, semester cable, some, uh, temperature sensor, and then pressure gauge, and something like a one kilometer long uh, 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 cable system. Uh, but uh, uh, there were two ambitions, uh, especially the acoustic transmission zone over that, so we can, could visit this particular side, trigger by, 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 by the acoustic signal, it leaves the data and so forth. But uh, there was a strong Kuroshio current, vibration was so severe, landing was difficult, and we installed it, but we never could retrieve the data from this particular uh, observatory. So first trial downhole observatory, but failed, so we could Zannen in Japanese. But trial, trial gave me a, a, a lot of sort of confidence. So the, so the in 2001, when we made a cheeky proposal, I explained to the Ministry of Finance, I have uh, testified many times why you need this kind of big monster ship, what this do for the Japanese science, not just science, but the Japanese community in general. So I gave, I explained this figure. So this chiku is not for the simple geological sampling, but monitoring of Earth interior is the main purpose of building chiku. 
So here is the cartoon showing the observatory in, in downhole observatories in which are made the canisters and uh, seismometers being connected with the network ocean floor observatories. And on, along this line, you can shoot air guns repeatedly. You can observe detailed geomorphological change through the AUV and there will be acoustic GPS station. And therefore you can really monitor whole whole package. Uh, we, inside, inside the uh, subduction zone, what's going on and surface manifestation of the, all these deformations. So uh, anyway, so that, that was one of the reasons why the chiki was uh, made. And since then, we have been operating Chikyu along Japan. And I'll explain two cases, Tohoku Oki earthquake and magnitude line earthquake uh, after mass drilling in Tohoku Oki and the Nantor size, Nankai Trife size machine zone experiment. <clears throat> so just simply remind you the, the plate tectonic uh, scheme of uh, Japanese island, Japan trench here. Uh, uh, to your right, and then Ankai Trough is subduction zone or the Philippine Sea Plate. So J first dream, Japan touch mega earthquake first response dream expedition three four three and another three four three Samista Cave 2012. March 11, 2011, uh, everybody know that the huge tsunami washed the Sendai port and all the Tohoku area was really demolished by this huge, huge tsunami. And interesting enough, at the time uh, the tsunami took place, the two offshore uh, seafloor stations installed by the University of Tokyo Earthquake Research Institute. Maybe Hino-san knows all these things. <laughs> But uh, uh, the, the two stations with the, with the pressure gauge uh, at the seafloor, and then the earthquake occurred 14.46. And one minute later, this start recording the uh, wiggle, and then there's a slow rise of uh, sea level at two meter. In, in about 10 minutes later, there was a very sharp peak. So apparently the two stage uh, occurrence of tsunami. And then exactly the same form was recorded in this station, which is thousand meter deep. And then tsunami arrived at the Kamaishi, city of Kamaishi over there, the 1521. So this, uh, record shows there was some unique uh, uh, mechanism for gen generating the tsunami, but more importantly, probably this is more important, this data sets were not used for the real-time warning system. Uh, there's a 20 minutes uh, time lapse, so if you can see this and record it and immediately transform to the warning, you have 20 minutes time to evacuate the people. This is an important from a real time recording of tsunami at shore, offshore of, 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 of the area. Uh, simply because this was a university uh, a station made mainly for the research purpose. So this is the national system was not really incorporated this, this, this system into the tsunami warning. So this is a lesson we learned, but the, uh, the, the motion of the uh, landward slope of the uh, uh, Japan to is really fun, huge. This is, uh, of course, uh, 10,000 times the exaggeration. So it was, but this moved really uh, toward the trench, and then there's a 50 meter displacement, 
And then Jamstack have fortunately have a uh, report of the uh, trench uh, sediment, trench fill. And before there was a horizontal here, there's a deformation. So they, apparently the deformation went all the way to the trench segment. This is something new to us because uh, most of the uh, seismologists and geologists didn't expect the plate boundary uh, uh, seismic slip reach to, the, uh, to this uh, trench axis because these zones are formed, considered formed by accretionary complex is off-scale sediment, uh, which is very, very weak and uh, no capacity for, for the uh, uh, storing the uh, elastic strain. So, well, now one year later, Chiki went to this place, that is a deformed trench zone, here it's uh, uh, water depth 6,900 meter, penetrate about 850 meter uh, 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 before sea floor. This is the uh, uh, sort of deepest penetration water depth wise and ever run by scientific ocean breathing. And so the nice seismic background, uh, seismic uh, imaging also. And then the good luck enough uh, that the uh, core reached to the recover the sample plate shaded uh, mudstone, which represent fault stone. And then we have done. <laughs> so uh, the the uh, they are preparing for the uh, semester stream is exactly the same as the Ondo project, the one which we, uh, I tried uh, at the Nankai. So 20 more years later, it came here, and then this uh, drill stream uh, being lowered to the depths of 6,900 meter, and this uh, uh, drill pipe or pipe inside that uh, 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 temperature stream was installed, and then it got to be disconnected. So it's, and then we, because ship is heaving, you can see the heap in, and. It the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, all this uh, drill pipe. This is uh, Mr. Fulton from the University of Texas, uh, Texas a and Then after the, uh, about uh, uh, nine months later, we dove using the, uh, the Shinkai, uh, ROV system. And find that uh, this particular, uh, if you can see some GQ, this is the one which uh, is the Tamista string is underneath uh, with eye and with hook. You use a manipulator to hook on. and then retrieve the whole, whole system. <clears throat> so
So the the result is really to me it's really fantastic. And you can see this is a beautiful so uh, uh, correlation logins core and observatory uh, uh, system with resistivity is the one which you measure the water content of the formation there's a break which turned out to be a fault zone you see uh, there is a bridge it is clay stone and there's a clay content and then in here is a zone from here to here you can see the temperature is a nine months and then about 817 uh, meter uh, 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 the water uh, below sea floor you can see zone of the thermal anomaly about two degrees suggesting that, that there was a, a residual temperature a uh, frictional temperature uh, 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 residual uh, record suggesting the this there's a zone right, the fourth zone slide in high speed causing the frictional heating so th this is uh, one first time in the history of ocean science magnitude non-earthquake a fault place being drilled and we we, we demonstrated that the uh, observatory science actually verify this particular fault zone slip in high speed so this could be a cause of the mega tsunami. Uh, I think time is uh, running up a little bit, but uh, uh, please five 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 minutes or so. What on the sound? A little bit. <laughs> okay, uh, Nankai Trough uh, with the same sort of uh, seismic profiling, but this time. Uh, the, uh, uh, it, it's been uh, over 20 years since I have done two ship seismic experiment. The 3D seismic uh, work been done. Here is it, the cube inside. You can see in every uh, cross section, you can see the seismic reflecting, uh, ref, uh, reflectors uh, uh, structure. You can see again the oceanic crust descending. And then there, there is a big fault zone coming out and come out this way and deforming all these things. See the tilt of the strata suggesting this one is uplifted. And then there is a, a, a reflector here. It, it, it's a BSR, bottom simulated reflector, uh, above the methane hydrate is stable, underneath a free gas. But anyway, the whole structure suggests this, this zone we call mega spray fault is a major sort of zone of the uplift here. If this is a transient phenomenon, like, then it should cause big tsunami from, the, from this fault zone. That was a kind of model which we had idea in 20, 2007 version of the model, this mega spray fault and then uplift, and then this movement upward called tsunami. So at that time, we didn't expect this one to move as a high speed uh, uh, slip phenomenon. Uh, so we thought this is, uh, this is mainly seismogenic, but front uh, is not the seismogenic, but turned out to be wrong. This is the same year this paper published at the time of Mangji 9 earthquake in Tohoku. We found there is a evidence, I'm not going to detail, but that the vitrinite reflectance is a codification of the plant debris in the sediment, which is a high heating event took place at this particular drill site, suggesting the Sleep, high speed sleep and frictional heating is reached to the trench. So that's exactly the same phenomena we found in Japan trench, in Nankai, it's the same thing. So because of that, I think the uh, uh, Japan cabinet office, uh, main Japanese main, uh, 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 the committee for the uh, 
mitigation of the disaster chain, the whole picture of the Nankai Trough used to be this is a previous zone of mega rupture, but they added tsunamogenic front here, and then it caused huge difference in tsunamogenesis. Here in the town of Kuroshio, the 1946 Nankai earthquake, tsunami height was six meter, but if you include and rupture the whole area, tsunami here is height is 34 meter of tsunami. And Kuroshio town is shocked. <laughs> so they, we revised completely the picture of the tsunami genesis in, in Nankai Trough. But in addition to this, we have a cable network being extended uh, along this uh, borehole. And then also we uh, installed the uh, observatory network uh, using a borehole. And then we uh, uh, now have a great picture of a slow slip event, but I think this will be explain the next talk uh, of Araki-san. So I'm going to skip this one. And then we have extending the whole package of the uh, borehole observatory and uh, cable network system in the entire Nankai trough, extending the more to the western portion. So <clears throat> what we learned from the Chikyu during in Japan to Nankai to have us subduction of Norin, we have technical innovation, core log seismic observatory integration has completely devised our understanding of the plate boundary uh, uh, earthquake and tsunami genesis. So combined borehole observatory and seafloor cave network will provide the very useful real-time warning system, which probably reduce the casualty and then some damage to our society. So two more slides. Uh, what is the next cutting edge uh, technology and CQ and IODP beyond? Uh, we believe the core log seismic observatory experiment uh, uh, integration is a key for in the future also, but key technology will be fiber optic cable uh, being more or uh, durable, uh, inexpensive, and, and can be can be uh, installed in wider area of the observatory. For example, in Iceland, they have already started. And last slide is, is that, of course, ultra deep drilling into the upper, uh, oceanic crust to the upper, upper most mantle will be uh, ultimate goal. But uh, not just a single hole. I like sea drilling transect which will provide mantle convection, plate tectonic earth material cycle, and evolution of life, which may be some of the key component of the answer of which uh, 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 rays could be answer partly you know, of this kind of, kind of endeavor. And into this uh, understanding, provide in, uh, insight into the evolution of the habitability of the exoplanet. And to me, it's a borehole experiment if biosphere could, could be important, so for example, low, low electromagnetic energy for the uh, uh, deep biosphere evolution and sustainability. And also, I heard from the last uh, seminar that uh, uh, mantle mineral as a paleo detector for the dark matter and neutrino. Uh, Sebastian Baum and all these people have been proposing. I found this is quite exciting. Uh, so I like see the TQ and IODP could be active and then we uh, play an important role in the future cutting edge technology and science of the earth system. Thank you very much.